So when I first saw glass mouse gates, I mean, I thought they were a total meme like most people. How could anyone use these and actually be good with them until they started getting really popular? I mean, big hats off to Pulsar when it comes to the marketing and the branding of the super glides because the hype behind these is insane. The real question is though, are they actually any good? Will these improve your aim or could they actually make it worse? Because we know that a different mouse and different mouse pads can hugely impact the characteristics of your aim, whether you're after more control and stopping power or a more speed focused, low friction experience. But how much impact can glass mouse kits really have? These days, I'm using a Logitech G Pro X Superlite on the Artisan Hayati Otsu mouse pad. And yeah, no complaints with this setup at all. Glide is really solid, generally pretty low friction, but it's still enough control for the types of games that I play. And I have actually upgraded the stock mouse glides to ones from core pads. These are aftermarket PTFE glides, which do offer, you know, a slightly lower friction experience. And I do actually prefer that. The super glides, on the other hand, these are a completely different game altogether. These have a glass construction and an ultra smooth polished surface. And out of the box, there is no traction on the mouse pad at all. So here's a really unscientific setup that I think illustrates the difference pretty clearly. Mouse pad on a flat desk. And on the right here, we have a hairdryer pushing the mice to the left. So the mouse with the core pads, you know, it moves, but you can see that it's moving pretty slowly. Honestly, the fact that it's moving at all from the airflow of a hairdryer is pretty impressive, but that's what you get with a 60 gram gaming mouse. The super glides on the other hand, absolutely no traction or resistance at all. Even the smallest effort will get the mouse moving. So there's almost no feedback from the mouse pad. It really feels like the mouse is floating in thin air and it's really hard to imagine how this could be useful for first person shooters where you do need at least some control. And as you can see here, you know, there's not really an impact on the different mouse pads on the super glides kind of glide speed. Everything feels really, really fast, at least compared to PTFE, where there is a significant impact between slower and faster pads. Basically, everything feels really, really fast when using the glass super glides, but the PTFE pads can be slowed right down when using a control pad. That's not to say that your mouse pad choice doesn't matter when using the super glides though. There definitely is an impact, but just less so versus the PTFE ones. So after I installed the super glides, I was super excited to try them out. I booted up Kovacs Aim Trainer, which I'm pretty familiar with at this point, ran through my typical scenario and the experience was really, really bad. As you can see, I'm having a pretty rough time here. I mean, aim is seriously just all over the place and it looks like my first time ever playing with a gaming mouse. When I say that there is absolutely zero stopping power or friction on these things, I really, really mean it. In fact, the only way that I'm able to control and stop the mouse is by using my hand contact with the mouse pad itself. So aiming scenarios where you need to flick and stop on a small target, they feel almost impossible because I'm so used to having that feedback and traction from the mouse pad and helping me stop on that target. If you actually look closely in this scenario, you can see that my cursor never truly stops moving. Even when I'm clicking on a target, the cursor is still kind of hovering. When we swap over to the stock mouse glides, on the other hand, you can see that I'm able to stop on a target a lot easier. And this is generally the best way to aim for this style of test. Think of games like Valorant or CSGO, for example. Those are games where the super glides are going to be a serious challenge to use and probably pose no benefit whatsoever. Tracking based games on the other hand, where your mouse is constantly moving, now that's a different story. Even there though, the experience is pretty humbling at first. Kovacs tracking scenarios, which I'm pretty familiar with at this point, showed me just how bad my raw mouse control actually was. I honestly thought that the super glides would give me an immediate improvement here, but yeah, that's just not what happened at all. Now, one interesting way to think about the super glides is it's kind of giving you the full raw input of your hand control and mouse movement. All of those little micro movements and imperfections that you do, the little corrections, which you don't really notice that you're doing because they're kind of filtered out by your mouse pad and your stock PTFE pads. Uh, those will now be picked up and registered as cursor input because there really is no stopping them on the super glides. Another way to think of it is that, you know, your mouse pad and your stock mouse glides, they're kind of like training wheels. They kind of 
helping you and filtering out all of those little micro movements, which may not actually be intentional. So at first, you know, very humbling for sure, but after some practice and break in, they do begin to feel really, really good. I actually ended up breaking multiple personal best scores in Kovacs, which is a big surprise, and tracking in particular felt unbelievably smooth. Click timing scenarios like one wall, six targets were still a bit better on the PTFE glides, except for Tile Frenzy, but tracking and micro tracking scenarios were noticeably smoother. Now I'll also note that I didn't lower my sensitivity when I switched to these faster glides because I wanted to keep the comparison here as honest as possible, but lowering your sensitivity a little bit is probably recommended. Another big difference that I noticed when using the super glides is that pressing your mouse into the mouse pad doesn't really affect the glide and friction anywhere near close to the amount that PTFE or stock glides do. With PTFE pads like core pads for example, you can really heavily adjust the amount of friction of the glides by pressing the mouse into the pad, whereas the super glides still offer really smooth tracking no matter how hard you press. Now, that can be either a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you play. Personally, as someone who unintentionally presses into the pad during tense scenarios, I did prefer the more consistent feel of the super glides. One of the biggest questions that I've seen so far about this product though is whether the extremely fast glide ends up slowing down over time, and if so, by how much. The answer is yes, mine have slowed down over the course of about a week, but it's not by a whole lot. Whether that's due to some of the polished coating wearing down or some micro scratches building up on the glass surface, I can't really say for sure, but again, it's not a really big difference. Now, one week might not sound like a lot, but trust me when I say that these saw some really heavy use during that time. Plenty of gaming, aim training, desktop <laughs> use, as well as even intentionally trying to break in the pads in between games. So going back to our super scientific test setup here with the hairdryer, our white G Pro X is the one that I've been heavily using for about a week, and the black one has a fresh pair of super glides that have never been used. You can see a slight difference here in the glide speed on camera and in person at least, the fresh glides do definitely feel a little bit faster, but again, it's not a huge difference. It's not at all like they slow down to the point of PTFE or stock glides, and I'd probably say that they do feel a little bit better after the break-in period as well. PTFE glides, even aftermarket ones, they still offer a lot more friction, even on a fast mouse pad like an Artisan Heian or a Razor strider. So to be honest, definitely a product here that I'm starting to enjoy. Most of all, it's just really fun to try something super different and gradually see improvement with it. And the other thing is that it's kind of exciting to think about how good you could potentially get with them. Now, with a fast mouse pad like an Artisan Heian paired with core pads, you are honestly getting most of the way there. That is a more balanced setup for a range of different games as well. But even with that, you still do have some friction and stopping power. So if you are currently using a fast setup, up similar to that and you want something that feels completely uninterrupted and super smooth, then these super glides are honestly something that I can recommend. I will say though, there are a couple of catches. Firstly, I noticed that the super glides are really sensitive to humidity changes and cleanliness changes on your mouse pad. So here's the Artisan Hayati Otsu, which I've been using for a few months and still looks super clean. And with the core pad skates, the pad feels super consistent across the whole surface. There's no change in the glide speed or friction. With the glass skates though you can definitely feel the areas of the pad which feel a bit dirty and faded and the friction increases over those sections is pretty noticeable. The same thing happens if you get sweaty hands while gaming and some of that is absorbed by the mouse pad. As gross as that sounds that is pretty normal you will start to feel that variance with the glass skates. So that's where I'd probably recommend a pad like the Artisan Heian or the Razor Strider which is pretty resistant to that stuff to start with. That's eventually what I swapped to in the end and so far so good. The other catch is that for normal desktop use, super glides are an absolute pain to use. Since the mouse never really stops moving, you end up just click dragging everything and it's not a good experience at all. Otherwise though, this is definitely a product that I can recommend and that is not something that I was expecting to say at the end of this review. Again, I thought this was a total meme product until they got a bit more popular and you know, I started giving them an honest try. I do still think that for the average gamer, even the average FPS player, these will probably make your aim and mouse control worse because the mouse control is completely unfiltered as I was saying earlier and it'll probably pick up a lot of that unintentional movement but for the other group of users you know people like myself perhaps people who play a lot of first person shooters people who practice in aim trainers and, and you know are really a sweaty FPS nerd to be honest uh, you know this is something that I can actually recommend and I will leave them linked down below so 
as always, huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.